Hey everyone, it's Yuka here. In today's video, I'm talking about one of my favorite Apple products of the year, the iPad Pro 2018. So at this moment, I don't have any kind of like actual laptop that I'm using actively. So to answer the question, which is also the title of this video, could a maxed out iPad Pro replace my MacBook? Well, it actually kind of did, but it was also inevitable. So, well, let me explain. So I used to use the MacBook Pro 13 inch with the touch bar, um, but that was my work laptop. I left my full-time job recently, and so I had to give back my work laptop and so I don't have that anymore. And leaving my full-time job is, was a huge decision I made um, and that deserves another video. So I'll get into that in another one. But yeah, that happened. So as I was saying, I have been laptopless for a few weeks now and outside of my home office, which is right here, where I have my iMac Pro, I have been using the iPad Pro for everything work and play. So for my set, I have the one terabyte 12.9 inch Wi-Fi model uh, in space gray. I also got the smart keyboard folio and of course the second generation Apple Pencil. So far, I feel like I haven't came nearly close to its limits. I actually started working with my friend's startup doing some freelance marketing type job. So I'm using apps like Gmail, Spreadsheet, Google Docs, all the Google Suites. And I'll also be using some of the Adobe apps like Lightroom. It's been really good, especially the Google apps because my job is to kind of strategize and write up all the plan and that kind of thing. So I'll be just typing away uh, like I do on my normal laptop or iMac and I just forget that I'm using an iPad. So for my other use case, it's to take with me when I travel. So since I don't have anything else, any other laptop to take with me, I will only need to rely on the iPad Pro. Um, so that means I need to do all my emails, planning for a video, editing, making thumbnails, uploading, that all needs to work on the iPad Pro. So I haven't, put it to the test yet, but I feel like that deserves another video on my workflow and how that would work for me. But I'll probably be editing with Premiere Rush or even LumaFusion, I've heard great things about that. I'll definitely keep you updated on how that goes. I'll be traveling to Japan in January, so that'll be a great time to test that out. Okay, so let's talk about some of the pros and cons and little quirks that I've found and what I'm excited about. So one of the things is the keyboard. I actually don't think this keyboard itself isn't too bad. It's a little stiff, but uh, I'm actually okay with it. Um, the thing I struggle with the most is how iOS and macOS is a little different in regards to how the keyboard is handled. This is probably an edge case that not many people might have, but I switch over from English to Japanese keyboard all the time. I probably spend equal amount of time using each language. The seamlessness of switching the keyboards from Japanese to English is really important to me. On the Mac OS, I usually use the command key to do that. It's just like second nat nature to me, so I don't ever think about it, but my fingers just do it for me. On the iPad, since it's on iOS, I need to use the the globy icon to switch from English to Japanese and even to the emoji keyboard. I found that on the settings you can also do that with the caps lock uh, if you want to assign that to language or keyboard switch. But since I don't use that key on the Mac, I just need to stop and think about it in order to do that. That's, that might be my personal quirk, it might not apply to you, um, but that's something that I found within this few weeks I've been using the iPad Pro. Okay, so similar to that, the other maybe con could be that iPad Pro 
runs on iOS. It really depends on the app developer how serious they are on making the iPad experience great. I found that Google apps and Adobe apps are amazing and if you use that, that's awesome. I think it will probably work for you. But if you're using other Mac apps that are really essential to your work or other, I don't know, websites that um, that is like key to your workflow that might not work on iOS, that might be a problem for you. You might have to find other ways to uh, make it work on your workflow through different apps or through different hacks. There could be some limitations, but then there are other things that you can't do on the Mac OS, like use your finger or use the Apple Pencil to do your work. Okay, so here's what I'm excited about. As you guys have heard me talk about so many times in this video, I love Google Docs and I am a formatting freak. So I use um, the keyboard to format all of my documents like H1, H2, H3. Sometimes I go into H4 because it just looks pretty. Having the same shortcuts on the keyboard just makes my life so much easier and so seamless. I'm okay with having an iPad to replace my MacBook Pro. And on other apps as well, um, there are a lot of sh keyboard shortcuts that you can use if you have the uh, Smartfolio or if you're using other third-party keyboards, it'll work the same way. Once you're using an app, you can long press the command key to see what keyboard shortcuts you can use on that app. So sometimes the app developers are not doing that, so it just depends on the app if they have that or not, but you can just give it a try if you have some of your favorite apps, um, just long press on command and see what comes up. So the next thing I want to talk about is Face ID. So this is actually the first device I have with Face ID. Um, so I didn't upgrade to the iPhone 10s. I still have my iPhone 8 Plus. And so this is my first time using Face ID on my device. I've seen other people do it. It's kind of sometimes awkward if you're wearing sunglasses or I don't know if you're in the dark or if it's upside down, it just not, doesn't work sometimes. On the iPad Pro, since I'm sitting and especially since I usually have my folio case on, it's just like really natural for me to just look at it because I'm looking at the screen anyways for it to wake up and take my face ID and log me in. This is where face ID kind of shines. It's been a really seamless experience. The iPad Pro lets you sign in with your face ID in any orientation. So that's really great too if you're holding it upside down or sideways. So it just works really well. Okay, so thirdly, USB-C is here what like I thought this would never happen it's too bad it doesn't take in any of like the storage devices but since I can connect directly to my camera and just get all the data out of the card I don't have to have a card reader and all the different dongles I can just carry one um, USB-C kind of cable that could be used to charge the device but also connect to my camera so I can get all of the data into the iPad and it really helps that I have one terabyte so I can just keep all the data dumped on my iPad while I'm traveling and just edit my videos on the go. Okay, so another thing, this might be a little minor, but I like that I can have the angle of the screen right, right here like this, but the depth of the laptop or iPad is not as big as a MacBook. Does that make sense? Like, so to have this angle on a MacBook Pro, you have to open it up a lot more and it will take a lot more space on your desk, which might come in handy to have it compact if you're traveling, if you're on a plane and you wanna open up your laptop on a airplane table thing. This will be great. Like you can have the right angle, but it doesn't take as much like depth into your table, so. Just another thing, It's it might be minor, but I wanna be working on the plane to edit. I think that'll be great. So far, it's been a really great experience using the iPad Pro uh, for work, for play, for drawing, for watching YouTube. While I'm not traveling and while at home, I can take this on the go in the cafe, but when I really want to do serious editing work, I can go on my iMac Pro to, to work on that stuff. So I think the real test will be when I'm traveling, how much 
can I rely on this? And uh, I think that will kind of give me the ultimate answer of if I can really, really replace my MacBook. All in all, I think, I think it's really good. I'm really happy with it. But I think the next question is thinking about, is it for you? If you're thinking of buying the iPad Pro only and you don't have any other desktop computer or anything else, I think it might be a little tricky, especially if you're thinking about you doing some more complicated stuff like video editing or photo editing or like really hardcore illustrator work or something. For me as a non-engineer, non-designer type of person, it works for me because I can just work on my Google suite. You use like Microsoft office type apps that also works great on the iPad. I would feel personally a little bit insecure of not having any device with Mac OS, um, but that's just me. It might work for you. All right, so that's it for today's video. If there are anything else you want me to try with the iPad Pro and make a video about, please let me know in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.